So, welcome back to another live stream on the channel. It's good to finally be back after a long month. I think it's been long overdue. It's actually been a while since I've live streamed on the channel. So, this should be a lot of fun. Of course, today we're talking all about Alessandra Michela at Valentino. This should be quite interesting because I remember earlier on we were all speculating where Alessandro Michele would go after he left Gucci. I actually have a video where I personally speculated that he would work at Chanel. Of course, Vision Viard is doing what she's doing at Chanel. She's still there. Um, and then recently it was announced that Pierpaolo Piccioli is, you know, leaving Valentino. And then came some more discussions about who would replace Pierpaolo. And Alessandro Michele came up. And just like that, we have massive fashion news and a big talking point that I thought would be good to talk about in a live stream and have sort of a community discussion on whether we think Alessandro Michele will have a lot of success at Valentino. Sort of, it won't be similar to Gucci, I don't think, because I think that. If we think of what Alessandro Michele did at Gucci, Alessandro Michele literally tripled the revenue of Gucci. When he was creative director of Gucci, Gucci actually passed the 10 billion euro revenue point in one like tax year at Gucci. So he made tons and tons of money. I don't think that sort of growth is possible at a brand anymore because I think all of them have sort of gone from making a few millions to billion dollar brands, the same as the case, or maybe a few hundred million. The same as the case with Demna, who took Balenciaga from a company that was making a few hundred million to, to billions. And so I think because now a lot of these major brands, they're all on the sort of making 10 billion mark, it's very hard to grow something when the customer base is almost fulfilled in a way. It's almost been maximized. So I think Nowadays, these creative directors have a much more difficult role than creative directors in the past, where they didn't have much history. There wasn't a big customer base anyway. Now I think they've almost captured majority of the customer base. And I just don't really see how financially they push a lot of these brands forward. But some way, they find a way. I always say that I always feel like luxury brands are not going to grow anymore because They've cut every single corner. The prices are going up. The quality is going down. But people still buy it. And they still make more money year on year. So I just feel like, you know, they find a way. But other interesting things about, you know, Alessandro Michele being creative director of Valentino is the fact that he'll be designing Haute Couture. It's quite funny because we have seen so many Alessandro Michele collections. He was at Gucci for quite a long time. But he's never designed an Haute Couture collection. So that should be really interesting to see what his vision of Haute Couture Valentino would be. I mean, that is the basis of the brand. It's no longer his comfort zone. This is very much outside of his comfort zone. If you think of his time back at Gucci, he was the head of accessories and he was an accessories designer for years under the likes of Tom Ford and under the likes of Frida Giannini. And then, of course, he became creative director, which is why I think he was so successful at Gucci is because he designs really good accessories. That's his background. If you think of things like uh, the Dionysus bag or something that was huge, the Prince Town loafers and the mules, especially the ones from his debut collection, those went insane. And of course, he took a lot of ideas from his time with Tom Ford. So if you guys remember, under Tom Ford, Tom Ford had these like jeans that were embroidered with flowers and stuff. And Alessandro Michele took the idea and put that into accessories like bags. Um, so he's really good at the accessories. I also think that's a big reason why Valentino hired him, you know, to design accessories and to make accessories that work. When I think of Valentino accessories now, they're kind of dry. I think the ready to wear Valentino is also really dry in terms of sales, like interest, intrigue. It's quite uh, stagnant at Valentino. All the rock studs and, you know, the rock stud sneakers, those have kind of died out in terms of what people are buying and wearing. And as much as I think Pio Paolo um, Piccioli is an amazing designer, I think he was one of the most consistent couturiers. He's not the most sensational ready-to-wear designer. I think it's, obviously, designing haute couture is completely different to ready-to-wear. It's a different skill entirely. So many good ready-to-wear designers cannot design haute couture at all. Uh, Pierpaolo, I think, is the other end of the spectrum where he's really good at 
of couture collections. But when it comes to, you know, filtering these ideas into something that's a bit more commercial and viable and cheaper, because a lot of his Valentino was just so well crafted that it ended up being so expensive because everything's handmade, right? Um, and he just couldn't really filter down those ideas to make interesting ready to wear the way that, say, a Rick Owens has really elaborate ideas and he can make a jacket that might cost 20,000 euros, but he can distill the idea into a jacket that is inspired by the exact same ideas, but is way more commercial and it's way cheaper. Um, and that's a skill also. So it'll be interesting to see if Alessandro Michele can kind of distill the ready to wear, make it interesting, even though what we associate with Valentino ready to wear now is quite, it's more classic. It's not maximalist and kitsch like Alessandro Michele is known for doing. Those are kind of the clothes that he makes and that's sort of the aesthetic that we've known him for. So yeah, very, very interesting things. Very, very interesting discussion to be had. Let me see what people are saying in the comments. Uh, new Valentino Couture shall be interesting. I totally agree. Um, generating mainstream hype will probably be a focus. Valentino is mostly praised in the fashion industry and enthusiast environment, which is true. But then again, for a lot of these companies, it's all about money, right? So it's all about sales and how much they can make, which is why they're trying to go in a different direction. Hello, you might want to turn this up. I can hear something going. Okay, it's cool. It's fine. Now. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How Jesus. are you? How are you, sir? I am doing well. That is a close up. That is too close. <laughs> this needs to be like, that's way, that's Jesus. way too close. <laughs> no. No, it's fine up with us. How are you? I'm great. How you? you just got back today, right? Or was it yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. I came. Oh, okay, yesterday. Okay. I had like a seven-hour nap, and um, I'm good. Did Ziggy did... tackle you to the ground? Yes, he did. <laughs> the whole day today, I've been like with the dog. I still the god. So I'm, 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 I'm happy to be home. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just chilling, doing my thing. I'm finally settled in because I was oh, in nice. Paris, and then I just came back. So it's all good oh, now. Okay. Perfect. Good news from the Valentino camp, I see. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. What are your What are your general thoughts to kind of jump into it about Alessandro Michela at Oh, Valentino? I'm down for this. Oh, I'm 100% down for this. I love what do you think album. he's Perfect. going to do, though, at Valentino? What do you think? I mean, I, I think that there's, like, a, a big difference, I think, between Gucci and Valentino is, like, how much Gucci, uh, how much Valentino, I think, like, relies on its archives a lot more. I, I mean, like, if you want to talk about, like, a house house, like, Valentino has been a house since, like, what, 1959? Um, so... I like the fact that there's a, a, a lot of like archives that he can pull off from. Gucci was always like more, Gucci was not um, artistic in mm. the same sense I think that Valentino was. Um, just because I think like, I mean, Valentino started as a couture house, so it, it, ju it yeah. just makes sense. But um, I think like Gucci was always a little more commercial and like more geared to the mainstream, which is fine. Um, I think when it comes to Valentino, I think what he's going to do, like, let's be honest. I mean, he's going to do pretty much, he's going to do the pretty much very similar to what he's been doing at Gucci, but I don't think he's going to tone it down a little bit more, I think, in my opinion, at least. I mean, he has to because it's Valentino, yeah. right? So, Correct. yeah, I, I don't think he can do that at Valentino. Yeah, I mean, like, and do I want him to tone it down? To be honest, not necessarily. Because I'm missing the aesthetic. I'm missing maximalism in fashion. Everything, you know, like every brand is showing the same show. It's brown, <laughs> it's brown shirt and black pants. Jill, like, Jill Sander looks like the row, which looks like Gucci. It looks like Le Mer, which looks like Xenia. Exactly. <laughs> like everybody's showing the same stuff. So I'm like, you know what? If he's going to do what he's been doing in Gucci and Valentino, all power to you. I'm 100% down for that. Because, like, nobody, like, the only brand that I can ever think of, and it's not even close, it's, like, the only brand that I can think of, like, goes into, like, Alessandro Michele aesthetic, and it's not even that, but it's slightly there, is Etro. Right, right, I and, can see and, that. And, yeah. and it's not, you know, and it's not even, like, as close, but that's the only only brand that is, like, 
somewhat by like 1% similar to Alessandro's Gucci. So I don't know. For me, I think it just like makes sense for him to go somewhere. I, I'm i glad that it's Valentino. Uh, but the question is now like, where does Pier Paolo go? Right. People keep saying the same thing that we said about um, Alessandro. They're saying, oh, he might go to Chanel. People really don't like Virginie. I think he, I think the like I think maybe, uh, where I think he could go is Fendi, Rome, yeah. Italian. There is already a great accessories designer. Um, I think it would not be a bad idea to be honest. And I think since Ken Jones has been there, also I don't think people have really been that interested in the Fendi collections. Yeah, his women's wear is like is is what from when I talk to people, they're like, oh yeah, the women's wear is like what is um, kind of like triggering for them. But mm. his accessories are on point. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Honestly, they really are. Definitely every season, and I mean Sylvia's there too, doing her thing. So that's also a big factor because she's she designing should, a lot of the bags. She should go to. She should take over just like the whole Fendi. I swear to God, like those two. I Fendi wish she did. I just wish. She I did. swear, those two Fendi. Are so <laughs> we crazy. say this in every stream, every but I just can't time. stress it. Every I can't stress it enough. They're so good. They are so damn good, but um. But but I think that like I want to see what Alessandro is going to do with Couture because it's going to be a, a completely new thing for him. Yeah, and I think that that's where he's going to. I'm not going to say struggle, but I I don't know actually because like I want him to have the like a dis distinctive view of Valentino Couture and a distinctive view of Valentino's ready to wear. If it both goes crazy maximalism. It's going to clash. It's going. It's going to all look like a ready to wear. So like he has to like figure out a way how to kind of like maneuver in between two of those. Right. Right. So, right. I think also a big reason why, because I was reading a Vogue business article where they said that of course carrying a, initially a quite thirty percent, I think, of Valentino. Yeah. And by 2028, contractually, they can like take mm -hmm. over the whole brand. And of course, they know a lot about what he can do financially for a brand when he was working at Gucci. So I think it's one of those things where they kind of want him to come in and sort of zhuzh up the accessories. Because even though we love Pio Paolo, we love his work, in terms of accessories, yeah. we didn't really get... There's no hit accessories anymore, like footwear bags, people... Like Valentino is not what people are talking about on the accessories front, and that's what makes the most money. And that's also um, Alessandro's specialty. That's kind of what he did before he was creative it, director at Gucci. And is, isn't it funny that all of these great accessory designers come from Fendi? Like Alessandro Michele was at Fendi, Pier Paolo was at Fendi, like all like Sylvia that's is true. Honestly, like all of them come from Fendi. I never like it's, it's something about Rome. It's the I, air. I'm telling you, like, they're, they're like they're like get, they're like uh, producing like great accessory designer. Who was it? is it? Marco De Vincenzo also. I think that he also worked with um, the Etro guy. Um, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Worked yeah. with um, for Fendi also for a while. So I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, honestly. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I think. What did he even do at Fendi specifically? I think he was an accessories designer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was so a, that's yeah. the thing. But that's why these brands want these accessories designers because, you know, that makes most of the money. Exactly. So to them, it's like, it's what makes the and most I, sense. And, and honestly, yeah. every person that was in that, um, and I'm going to sound shady as hell, um, every person that does not care for Sabato's Gucci right now, and Mrs. Michele is going to flock to Valentino immediately. Immediately. Yeah. They're not connected to the brand. They're connected to the aesthetic. So, I mean, the thing about Sabato's Gucci is that I like it, but I could buy that anywhere else. So it's it's not, yeah. it's nice, but it's like, Jill Sander, this goes back yeah. to the Xenia, Jill Sander, Le Mer sort of thing. It's like yeah. there's so many brands doing the same thing. Where do I even pick to get my one black coat? Yeah, that's true, though. That's true. I mean, like his accessories, I like his accessories. Am I dying to buy them? Not necessarily, to be honest. Um, mm. 
but that's that's not just him. I mean, like to be honest, that's like seventy percent of designers today. I mean, like everybody's making the same bags. To be honest, yeah. Uh, were Valentino's bags popular? I feel like I haven't heard or seen their bags in a minute. Um, the last bag that they had that was like they were trying to push is that half moon bag, which was actually pretty cute. Yeah. Um, but. What bag did they have that was like very popular? Nothing like to the. I can't really think of any I mean, of their bags that has really been. I mean, like the last thing that they had, like it's the 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 stud heels were huge, but that was in like yeah. 10 years ago. But but the stud heels is also with those. You know those sneakers with the studs too. Yeah, they came around the same time and they were like huge. Everyone was yeah. wearing it. Um, but the bags, yeah, I don't really. I don't think there are probably like some bags with studs that sold well at the time too, but I'm not <laughs> sure if they're doing yeah. well now. <laughs> yeah, rock stud bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but I, I think like when it comes to like bags, they were not never like it was never like, oh my god. So they need Which a, is probably a... why they need Alessandro there, because they need someone to really bring the it bags. Sure. That's very true. So we'll see. I mean, I'm super excited for it. I mean, like that show is going to be crazy. That show is going, oh, to, be going like, to be huge. Yeah, it's going to be huge. So, and I'm excited for it. Honestly, I'm very. When I heard the news first, I'm 100. percent Yeah, happy. and a lot of people were not. I was shocked. Really? Yeah. Well, actually, I got mixed reactions when I initially posted about it on YouTube. Like some people, were like, no, he's Valentino is dead. He's going to bring his kitsch boringness to Valentino and he's going to destroy the brand. And I'm like, to be honest, I just like someone that designs in a different way because every brand is doing the same thing. So yeah. anytime a designer has a point of difference, to be honest, to me, Correct. that's interesting. Correct. No, I, I agree. I mean, like, Yes, the guy on the right has a couture page on Instagram, yes. His voice sounds familiar. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like Beyonce, People know your voice now. You should I start swear charging. To God, they do. I swear to, I was in um, I was at the dream show. I was at the dream show and then I was talking to, to someone on the phone and this lady goes, she's like, wait. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, so, I'm sorry. She was like, I know your voice. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> like, hold on a minute. I know. A, I'm telling you, I'm starting to feel like Beyonce. They're going to be like, yeah, I recognize your voice. I'm like, <laughs> He should be a voice actor. People start know, watching right? Cartoon Network. Like, oh my god, that's enough. <laughs> <enough. laughs> like, Turn off the TV. <laughs> um, but but back to the topic. I mean, it's um, I I saw a lot of like negative reviews, uh, negative comments about it. Um, Same. But I mean, every look every time that you get a new designer, you sign up for something that you don't know. I mean, I hate to mention his name, but like Sean at uh, McQueen. Yeah. We did not, personally, I did not sign up for this. I did not sign yep. up for um, like a lower version of um, JW. Me personally. Mm. Am I willing to give him another shot? Of course. Of course I am. But um, for me, currently, that is the biggest mismatch in fashion industry currently. Um, yep. Because like that that debut collection was not it for me, um, yep. but I think that Alessandro under I think that like people underestimate him because like he's he's extremely intelligent and like they do connect him with the one aesthetic just because he did so much with that aesthetic that we haven't seen anyone do something that big in a very long time. Babe, I'm on a call. Yeah. What? Oh, duty calls. No, it's fine. I'll text him. <laughs> um, but like he 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 did something that was so strong in fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. that that like people are like automatically kind of like dissing him. And I'm like, there's you know, he he he's going to do what he thinks is the best, and we're gonna be here to witness it and like it or not like it. This is interesting. Well, according to people's experts' opinions in comment sections, Alessandro McKay. Alessandro made Gucci suffer financially. What? In what yeah. world? He literally, I, I remember reading a stat where I think for six consecutive quarters, 
yeah. the Gucci grew by like 30, 35% or more. And under his tenure, he rose Gucci to 10 billion euros in annual revenue. That does not sound yeah. like... The reason why apparently he left is because they wanted to grow even further past that. And they felt like his aesthetic <laughs> was not mass appealing enough to do that. That's why he left. Not because... Gucci was necessarily suffering. And actually, if anything, since he's left, they've actually been doing worse than when he was there, which is what all the financial reports are. If you read like BOF, the Financial Times, yeah. Business, they're always talking about it, how they're actually in limbo because they've gone against Alessandro thinking that they can get a designer that does something that's more mass appealing and they can make more money and it's almost backfired. So even though I, ha I don't know I have to have expert opinions, I don't I, don't, I, really I, have to, like, one, I have to say one thing, and like, I have to like stand in um, on the right side of justice on this one. Um, I know that people like um, don't like Sabato's work that much, from what I understand. They they think that it's like too plain. But there was these there were these articles of being like, oh yeah, the sales of Gucci went down twenty percent, blah 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 blah. And then this whole article writes like about the 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 sales not being good, not being good, not being good. And then there's a small paragraph being like. Um, we do have to know that Sabato de Sarno's items uh, came in the store a month ago. And I'm like, so mm -hmm. you're kind of like, it's such a clickbaity um, title mm -hmm. and a topic to be like, oh, yeah, the sales are really going down, but we're not even giving this guy a chance. Yeah. You know, so like, it, it, I hated seeing that just because it's so messed up. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, the, the, everything is going down. They're, they're down, down by 20%. But yeah, the same, but the thing. sales going down is not necessarily Sabato's fault because his right. clothes haven't had time to sell. It's the fault of Gucci, the team itself. Because remember, before he went there, it was the team that were designing those collections that are now yeah, in exactly, exactly. So those it's, were not. it's but that's still um, a thing of them going like against the direction of Alessandro Michele and yeah. going in a different direction. So it's still backfiring. But it's not necessarily Sabato's fault, at least not yet. We can't say yeah. that yet because his stuff is just hitting stores. It's more like what the Gucci team designed um, collectively that's not selling at all. True. But yeah, they, they did kind of scapegoat him, to be fair. Remember that right? BOF article that we were talking about where the executive literally said that we're not happy with it? I think it was I a Gucci that. executive that, that said that we're not so happy with that. the... You, that doesn't even make sense. You're supposed to back your designer to the ground. Correct. That, <laughs> that, that was, was so insane. Messed up. I swear to God, I'm like, I, whoever, uh, whatever PR let them publish that, it's like, I'm like, that does not make any sense. Why would you say that? Wait just a second. I'll be, I'll be back in a second. No worries. Let's go through some of the comments. Michaela at Valentino is a perfect match. A maximalist designer with a maximalist house. Pio Paolo did a fantastic job streamlining the collections, but now everyone is doing minimal, very, or, well, change is very needed, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I agree. Like I said earlier, I think that what interests me the most now in fashion, because everything looks the same, is actually any designer that has a point of difference, especially for the top luxury brands, because like I was saying earlier, it's this, we're now in this quiet luxury era where... Xenia looks like Le Maire, which looks like Gucci, which looks like The Row, which looks like Jill Sander, which looks like everything else. Um, and so, which also looks like Phoebe Filer. So it's like, let's have something different. It's just interesting to see different aesthetics on the mainstream of fashion at the highest level. There's been a number of new creative directors who have been criticized by their own houses. Same thing happened with Peter Doe entering Helmut Lang, the CEO is pretty pessimistic. I forget which article. Yeah, that's insane. I think these, CEO, these CEOs, I don't think they know what their job is. Their, their job is to make the brands earn more money. You're not going to build customer sort of, you know, faith if you're already talking down on your creative director. That's so silly, especially as a CEO or an executive at the brand. But you're not even like shitting on the designer, you're shitting on your own decision. I'm literally like, you, <laughs> you literally hired them. exactly your highlight just be like hey everybody look at the mistake that i made look, look how great this it's so is. silly that doesn't make any sense 
If I was CEO of a fashion company, even if I hated all the collections, I would publicly be like, oh, it's amazing. Oh. Because you look bad. That's who you hired. That's basically... <laughs> and also, the brand is going to make less money if they're like, well, the CEO doesn't even like it. So why should I like it? Mm. I mean, um, props to Ferragamo CEO and them because, like, from what I hear, from what I hear, the sales are not the best, but they're still sticking with them, and yeah. I love that. But at least the CEO is not like, "Oh yeah, we're thinking about <laughs> doing something else." No, CEO is like, "Our bags are the best thing ever." So I'm like, "Good." <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes CEOs gotta keep quiet. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you get a Subway sandwich and say that shit is trash, dude, you made it. <laughs> yeah, you made your own Subway. You picked the options. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> How are you going to pick your own options and then complain about it? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't get that. Quarterly part. reports with new designers are so tough, literally making yourself look worse. Yeah, I think... It's kind of misleading because the first quarterly report when a creative director is first hired is quite irrelevant because their clothes haven't hit the yeah. stores yet. So that's all based on what's already in stores before they got there. Sure. Let me see if I can catch up. Uh, Leo, Maximum. <laughs> Leo. Leo does not like maximalism. What Harris Reed, Daniel Roseberry, Miss Sohi are actually so horrid. I don't agree. Don't agree with that. I, I, I like Daniel Roseberry. I like Miss Sohi, not so much Harris Reed. Harris Reed um, for me doesn't do anything. But yeah, I but that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I think it's especially Daniel Lee. Dan, Daniel Bur uh, Roseberry. He's like one of the rare designers, I think, that today graduate, like students and stuff. He's one of the rare de designers that inspires somebody to do fashion. Mm. I think at least. Yeah, I mean, because I'm not saying that Scaffredi is not commercial. There's things that they do that's commercial, but compared to like, let's say Gucci or like brands like that, it's not really that commercial. Did you read that? So... No, wait, did, did you read that Italian article? No, what what was said? That they're not making money. That well, of course like, they're not making money. <laughs> but like to the point that it's like, last time that I checked, it was like twenty million in debt, and I think now it's like eight million in debt. I guess that's better, <laughs> at least. Uh, yeah, true. But like, <laughs> you're, you're like I'm more of a half full uh, glass type of a guy. <laughs> 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 And then we should send you a list of all of Leo Scaparelli comments from all live streams. It would make you cry. No, why? Is it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it's understandable. There's certain, like, everyone has, I guess, certain designers that whose work they don't resonate with. Like, Demna's work just, just doesn't resonate with me. Um, and I'm quite open about it. And then people are, like, really angry that I have that opinion on Demna's work. Um, so I, I understand, even though I don't necessarily agree with Leo, it's still valid. Yeah. Like Caprelli doesn't uh, have a No. No, so that's the thing. It's just uh but I can see why, like you were saying, the students, they can be quite inspired by it because it's just um the craft and like all these interesting ideas, but it's just not the most commercial thing. Yeah. And their prices are so high. Yeah. I'm like six thousand dollars for a pair of jeans, girl. Don't yeah. mention the Balenci overlord, the bots will be at your head. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen this video yet, but I really want to watch it. Um because I, I just watch most of Loic's videos anyway. I haven't um, seen it. Quite interesting. But I haven't seen it. I know he released it quite recently actually. Um but yeah, I haven't I'm yet to watch it. I was late for that show. Uh the Balenciaga one. Uh huh, and I'm blaming Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Why? When do you know that Kim was on time? On what show was Kim on time? She came there. The show was supposed to start at eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. She was there at eleven thirty-two. I'm like, I am oh, counting well. on you 
to be late, <laughs> so I can be late. No, but that's because my understanding, every time I'm at Fashion Week, I'm like, well, it's going to start 30 minutes after. So exactly. I'm just like strolling slowly and I'm late to every show, but I'm still on time at the same time. <laughs> I swear to God, it was me and the sound guys in the back. Everybody on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just don't understand, Damna. He's designing premium leather trash bags. <laughs> I like the comment because it's true. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. It is funny though that when you don't resonate with a designer, people then go to like you don't understand the designer. It's like, mate, have you been on this channel? I literally Wait. explain his references. Did you say Margiela? <laughs> Margiela. Did you say Margiela? You can say whatever you want. You can say, I don't like Margiela. The first thing that is going to... Rick Owens stands also. First thing you're going to come back with is that, well, you don't understand fashion. I'm like... <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Harry and Gold, 70% Gucci, they are, they are desperate. They own 70% of Gucci? Caring does? I don't I'm not sure if that's true. I don't know about I don't know if it's a hunt it's it's a 70, but I know that it's I think they own the whole thing. Yeah, I thought they own the whole thing. Now, well you maybe what you're confusing it is with Valentino because they own 30% of Valentino now. Yeah, I don't I thought they've always well not always actually, that's not true. They bought all of Gucci slowly because remember they had that whole fight with Bernard Arnault before they could like acquire the whole thing. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> what? That's one of my favorite fashion moments because Bernard Arnault was like so mad. Oh, yeah. Francois Pinot sort of like quote unquote stole Gucci from him. I love it. And that. it's like, but you did you did that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you literally did that to everyone. The second someone does it to you, oh my god, like everyone has to die. <laughs> That's so true. So is Alessandro going to be able to cultivate a Valentino stand base? I hope so. I mean, Alessandro has stands. There's people that wear like loads of rings or dress in a certain way and like wearing pussy bow blouses because of him. Yeah. Do you actually wear rings because of Alessandro? Is that just no, no. what you've always done? Okay, okay. I always done I always done it myself. I'm like Okay. Because you, no. you do wear the like massive, like really interesting yeah. Alessandro really rings. Like, super chunky rings. But I wear them because <laughs> of my mom. I don't know if I ever told you that. Oh I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger I wanted to wear rings but my mom thought it's gay. <laughs> she was right. <laughs> Yeah. Does that mean I'm gay then? Because I wear rings too. <laughs> According to my mom, yes. Um, no, she would not allow me to wear rings because she thought it's gay. So then when I moved to America, yeah, I started like putting them on because I like, had a protest. And then I started like, and I'm like, it looks cool. Yeah. And like, I feel like myself. So, so that's the reason I wear it. Yeah. That's so interesting. <laughs> that's so interesting. Oh my god, everybody's gay in this chat now. Yeah, everyone's gay. All of you are gay now. Yes, <laughs> Welcome Leo. to the club. Welcome. <laughs> it's fun. On Thursdays, we have potpourri. <laughs> Arnold has enough money to kill us all, guys. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. a lot safe because we were... Remember, Hanan, we were at the LVMH thing and Bernard Arnold was literally stood right beside us. That was hilarious. And, like, I, I whispered to you, I was like, imagine if he knew the stuff I say about him. He would have sent me out. <laughs> it was... So, basically, to break it down, do you remember how I approached the designer after that? I can't remember, actually. So, that, so that, just, just to explain to everybody... Me and I are like LVMH finalist awards, and then like we're going from one designer to another to another designer to see the clothes. All of a sudden, there's like Bernard Arnault there talking to a designer, and he was he was talking to the designer from uh, Who Decides War, and then all of a sudden, like he talks and walks away. And I approached the guy, and I'm like, "Well, now when you spoke to the richest person alive, here is the <laughs> poorest person alive. How are you?" <laughs> And it was, was, it like, was actually weird because I think he almost like 
Because remember, we were talking to them and then Bernardo and I came. So we actually had to leave t- for yeah. a bit. So he could talk to the designer because obviously it's his event. It's Bernard Arnold's event. We're not going to stand in his way, of course not. And but only one security. Funny. Do you remember one security? I'm like, yeah, it was. I feel like there were a lot of security, but we just couldn't see them because there was that huge guy that was stood behind him, who probably yeah. is ready to like tackle you if you did anything. <laughs> and then he's yeah, probably got funny. security all because the way the event was, I think it'd be a bit weird if he was walking around with like loads of security guards. Um, yeah, all but, around him, and it was kind of a private event, also. So it's like, yeah, you can not just like show up and like just like, yeah, yeah. So, but that was that was interesting though. That was funny because I was just like, yeah, if he knew what I say about him, oh my gosh, the security would have carried me out like a child. <laughs> if I end up in the Illuminati because of Daddy Arnold, we'll delete all the evidence of hate. <laughs> we'll start doing that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would have been added to a blacklist, definitely. <laughs> I think so. Semi- I, I don't think he cares. I've read in books that Bernard Arnold says, like, all publicity is good publicity, to be fair. So I don't think he cares about negative attention so long as there's attention. I don't actually think he cares. That's why we get invited to help me and make sh- stuff. Yeah. And we talk about Maria <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> now it all makes sense. <laughs> that he owns the French army. <laughs> 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 I mean, Bernard Arnold owns a lot of Paris, to be fair. So yeah. I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it past him. Like it's so weird. Like you're just walking through Paris. They're like, oh yeah, you know that hotel that's owned by LVMH. Oh yeah, you know that cafe that's owned by LVMH. It's like, <laughs> damn. Like, what doesn't he own? What doesn't he own? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but like he always like is like, I swear to God, like it's gonna sound so awful, but like he reminds me of Trump because like he walks like with his stuff, his sons and like daughter and stuff like that. I'm like, mm. Jesus Christ, the whole family empire is a dynasty, it's literally a dynasty. Oh. Yeah, liquor, my god, that's true, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Even the alcohol we drink, this he owns is a reading it. challenge. Uh, Maria gets dogpiled, but she's cracked the code and is making clothes that one want. 100% agree. 100% agree. And that's why, like, like I have my personal opinions on designers, like, for example, going back to Demna. But in, like, certain ways, I'm also humble enough to say that my opinion actually doesn't matter because at the end of the yeah. day, and- he's making loads of money for Balenciaga and it's selling really well, so he's going to remain there. Um so just because it's not my personal taste, it, like, who cares? People still buy it. Um, so I guess it's kind of a similar case with Maria, where it's just like, I have my opinion. Is it that relevant in the like wider scheme of things? Not really. However, this is my YouTube channel. So <laughs> I can voice my opinion on this in this one tiny corner of the internet. <laughs> exactly. No, I think like, she does create, like, clothes that women want mm. maybe not like aesthetically most pleasing to be honest but um it works for her Which yeah and i think also the because i'm not around a lot of the customer base of maria's work that's also why sometimes it's hard to understand how much it sells because you know maria it sells loads, but young women don't wear it. So then I don't see, apart from the bags, of course. So then I don't really see loads of Dior. Oh, Ziggy! Ziggy! His dog is so cute. So cute. Do you want to talk about Maria Grazia in New York? Ask, ask Ziggy what he thinks about uh, Alessandro Michele. Ziggy, do you like <laughs> Alessandro Michele? Huh? Do you like Alessandro Michele? <laughs> do you want to see him in Valentino? Do you know what I mean? 
um, is this if you know if you know type of stream or will we get more context context to what we'll explain everything you want we'll explain whatever you want ask any questions within reason at least um, I think the brand cachet of Dior is so high that she needs to provide a coherent collection, that she just needs to provide a coherent collection, and the existing customers will flock. That's true also. That is true also. Because, I mean, even, like, the way people talk about fashion outside of this, like, fashion bubble is very... I, I'm wearing the Dior's today. They don't even know what it's called. They don't even know the model. They don't even know when it came out. It's just, I'm wearing the Dior's today. Yeah. So some brands, if you have that cachet, you can literally sell people paper and they'll buy it because it's just, it's Dior paper. It's like, I've got paper. Okay, cool. But I've got the Dior paper though. It's kind of, it's just like that. But do you say, how long do you think she's going to stay there? I don't give her too long, to be honest. Do you not? No. I mean, I think her, her aesthetic has stagnated. I think I know what to expect every collection. Like, we're going to see some form of a bar suit. Yeah. There's going to be a feminist touch to it, um, which isn't necessarily bad, to be fair. Some of her feminist references are really cool. And then some of them are like, yeah. oh, interesting. Um, and then we're going to get the long skirts, the really, really long skirts. Um there's going to be like some reference to like some sort of empire, whether it's the Greek empire or the Roman empire. And it's just like, they're so like almost formulaic at this point. So it's almost like she's just there, just make money, make more money, but it's not really that interesting. I think that like, especially now in a culture where everything is changing, she's been there since 2016. So that is, she's been mm. there for eight years now. Which is a lot for a designer. Wait, Wait has you been there for that long? Oh my god, time flies right. really fast. Right, twenty sixteen, right? Time flies really fast. Yeah. Not. Um, she's been there since twenty sixteen, so I have a feeling that they're going to give her a year or two, and then someone else. But who would replace her, though? Um. I don't know. Mm. Who was before her? Raph was there. Yeah, Raph Simmons, Dior and I, Folklore. <laughs> um, watch the documentary if you haven't watched it, Dior and I, which follows Raph Simmons at Dior. Pretty interesting. <laughs> that Grease show with the nasty sneakers was so bad it could have oh been. Oh my God, good. don't, don't, I forgot about <laughs> that show. Don't, don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sohi, are you trying to piss Leo off? That was on Leo's like no no list. <laughs> exactly, he said he said I think, no. <laughs> I think Leo, what do you think? Like uh, Daniel Roseberry, Miss Sohi, or who else? Who, I think one? he said um, what's his name again? Uh, Harris Reed. Harris Reed. Okay, yeah. Leo. Question for you: You have to pick one of the three to replace Maria. <laughs> That's an interesting question, actually. Leo, who would you pick? Leo, I need to know. <laughs> you gave us the three options, you have to answer. <laughs> this is primetime entertainment. <laughs> it's very much a question like, what is the lesser evil? <laughs> Put Demna to Dior. Oh, hell no. Oh, God, no. Hell no. <laughs> oh, no. Leo said he'll pick Daniel out of the three. Interesting. Okay, fair. Fair. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's further inquire. <laughs> exactly. I'm curious. Oh, Met Gala is in three weeks from today. Oof. Yeah, very soon. It's going to be a shit show. Why did she say that? Is it what? because of the theme? Yeah. I'm telling you, see. <laughs> You'll see. But it's it's gonna, gonna be a disaster. <laughs> it's gonna be so bad. 
Honestly, like there's going to be like florals on florals on florals. What is it again? Like Sleeping Beauties? No, um, that's, that's the exhibit. Um, oh, the, okay, Garden yeah, of, yeah. the Garden of Time or something like that. Oh, yeah. Daniel is not as offensively awful as Harry's or Miss Sohi. I like Miss Sohi. I actually really like Miss Sohi. That's what I mean. So it's like... Do you think that there's a world where Galliano can go back to Dior? I think it'll just be so controversial, no? Well, I think that, like, isn't, like, this year his uh, comeback here, like, with the couture show and then the documentary? To be honest, the documentary, did you see it? Did you watch it? I haven't watched it, no. I haven't seen it yet. I heard it's really good, but my friends basically told me that it's very PR-y. Like, the way the documentary is made, it's kind of trying to... It's almost like it was made with the aim of clearing his image rather yeah. than just telling a story in it like it's like the proper way. Like saying, looking at the good, the bad, the ugly and all that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I haven't seen it. I really want to watch it though. I will watch it. I do want to watch it. He's an amazing designer. He is amazing. Correct. I mean, like it's a, it's a stain that he's always going to have. Um, but Oh, on you are on Twitter. Um, this is also on Twitter. What's on did Twitter? You, did you sync this to Twitter? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. Look at I did. you! Oh my God, work. Hey, she <laughs> is Oprah. She's like everywhere. She's like... I I I now live stream um to Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter at the same time. So you're on three platforms. No oh my God. <laughs> Why do people want a Galliano back in Dior? Guys, that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. I just, even though I don't think, I, okay, it would be controversial. I don't think it would be as controversial as people think. Yeah. I think that he has been excused by like big players in the Jewish community. And like, so I don't think he would get loads of kickback from that side of things. I just think in general, some people might just feel like, hmm. Should he be given that role again? But, but like, do we know a designer going back to the house besides Carl? No one else, right? Because mm. Carl went to Chloe, like, twice. That's the yeah. only designer that I know that, like, went back to the house that, like, he left. It doesn't happen. It's, again, like, CEOs shitting on their decision, you know? They're not going to yeah. fire someone and just be like, no, 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 come back. We love you here, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. So I don't think like that. That's the that I don't think it's happening. To be honest, anytime soon. The most important thing is that Bernardo and Galliano have reconciled. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, going back to what you said initially, yeah, I do think this is um, Galliano's comeback year. To be honest, I, it is kind of weird though that this is his comeback year because I think that you know those Swalk collections, especially during COVID, when he had those like documentaries showing the whole process and stuff. Yeah. I thought that was really good. And I thought it was also really interesting. I thought from that point he would have had the comeback, but I think those collections for some reason or whatever, they didn't resonate, but there was like Swalk 1 and Swalk 2. I like both of those collections. I thought they were amazing. No, I mean, like, to be honest, like he's doing Lord's work at Margiela, to be honest. Yeah. He's doing... Uh... Andy went back to her brand. No, um, Stefano Gal Galici. He's uh, yeah, right? Galati. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is that how do you pronounce his last name? I think it's Stefano Galati. I could be wrong though. Let me let me Google it quickly. Um, but yeah, it's quite interesting with Stefano because um, you know, I met Stefano. Uh, Galici is Stefano Galici, but mm -hmm. you know, I met I met him um, in Italy when I was doing the ITS thing because he was also one of the judges. Oh, nice! And it was so odd because obviously I'm such a big fan of the brand. And why? What happened? No, no, no. The, he didn't do anything. He's a oh. really nice person. It was just really weird because, like, I might critique some of your collections in the future. Sorry in advance. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's what we signed up for. Literally. 
that's why whenever I I see uh, Garam somewhere, I'm like, okay, buckle up. <laughs> But I got so much insight about the way that Andy House is running, which is very, yeah. very fascinating. That was really fast. Like so many, wow, so many moving heads. Uh, Andy Minamista is kind of like really back involved in the brand, which obviously was kind of the case that we knew anyway because of the store and the yeah. fact that Andy Minamista Serax is in the store and she's had this new perfume that she made, even though it's being sold by the house now. Um, so she's really involved, but I didn't know that she also now is so involved that sometimes she might like waltz into the studio and stuff. I didn't know that. I was like, oh, oh nice. interesting. The last collection was definitely more Galliano than Margiela. 100% yes. 100% true. True, but then I think at, at Margiela, do we just want, you know, Galliano to keep rehashing Martin ideas or do we want him to kind of like push it forward in a way? I'd See, rather yeah. have have some Margiela in it, but then the designs are the design is aesthetic mostly. See, I'm I, when you okay. This is like some double standards. I understand, but like take <laughs> the take that same concept, just what you said, and add it to Maria's Dior, and right. you're like, and you're like, well, I don't want the designers aesthetic that much. <laughs> Honestly, no comment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get shit ton of hate for that, but <laughs> I don't know. For me, I saw the New York collection, the pre-fall that was in New York yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that collection yet. There is literally dresses that are like drawings of New York skyline and a Statue of Liberty. Oh no. Like, it looks like a graduate. I, I wrote it on Twitter. I said, like, it looks like a graduate collection, but that would be offensive mm. for graduates. Because, like, I feel like graduates put a little more depth into, like, what they want to present. It just seemed not a bad collection, not a bad collection overall, but there were, like, a couple of pieces that I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, why? <laughs> Honestly. Oh, my God. Honestly. <laughs> Don't really Alicia Alicia no, she, she didn't. She didn't. <laughs> she didn't. That yeah, would have been a good touch, though. But no. But what? What it? I mean, like it's so cliche. I'm like, there was. <laughs> I think it would be a good touch, to be honest. If if I, I, it wasn't, if if the collection wasn't so cliche. What are we doing? So here? If the collection, if the collection was not so on the nose, having Alicia Keys sing "Empire State of Mind" would have been like a good contrast. If that makes sense, but yeah, if you're gonna throw American flags on and like Statue of Liberty, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sisters, come on. I mean, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and then the thing that like won me over. <laughs> that won you over. Oh my god, <laughs> the shade. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, where are you? Jesus, where are you? Oh, wait, no, it gets worse. Where is the where is the back of that dress? Wait, uh oh, oh yeah, oh no, this took me out. This took me out, bitch. Wait, <laughs> oh, here we are. So she did this kind of like Amelia Earhart um, look. Yeah. Which is whatever. It's fine. I wasn't like like this. Right? Oh, wow. Very, but wait, it gets worse. Because look at the back of this jacket. Do we see the flag? Oh. I mean. Oh, no. Why? Why is Jesus alive? And it's actually, and it's a nice jacket. <laughs> the jacket is not that bad, but like half French, half American flag cut on a diagonal. As a society, we're better than this. This is not the world that Christian Dior wanted. It's not. It's just saying cute. It just saying cute. There were some couple of nice pieces, honestly. I'll, I'll, I'll give her that. Yeah, oh my god, he's the back of the jacket looks like Pepsi. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Jesus. 
I'm like, there were like a couple of nice pieces, but I'm like, it, for me, it just like seems lazy. And if I see one more time this reference, it's a oh, leopard no. jacket. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then every article is like, oh, yeah, she pulled from the archives. It's from 1947. But it's the actually. same archives. Like, it's, it's, like, it's just it's like what I say with the bar suit. It's like the same stuff. Over and over and I'm over like, and over the again. Same, and it's always the same reference. I'm like, you know what? Do you know something I also love about Alessandra McKellar, going back to him, is... Um, God bless her. Is, <laughs> is the campaigns. I found his campaigns really, really fun. Let me see if I can put one on the screen right now. Can we pull um, some from this, please? God bless you. Please, let's pull some from this. If I see that fucking leopard... It's giving, giving Maria design cues. <laughs> I swear. Do something, Charlie. Oh, yeah, his campaigns were on point, always. The campaigns are always so much fun. Yeah. No, is uh, No, you know what's hands down, if not the best show that he did, in my opinion, and I know that people are going to hate me for saying this, uh -oh. um, Gucci Aria with Balenciaga thing. Okay, I, I, okay. I clothes wise, I wouldn't agree, but moment yeah. wise, I would. Moment wise, no, no, no. Clothes wise, it was okay. Yeah, but but that video and everything, like everything about that video, hands down. Yeah, was I agree with that? Was brilliant. I agree with that. One of the best things that I've seen in fashion in the last couple of years, honestly. Yeah, the moment was huge. It was like really big and amazing. And like, yeah, it was also kind of unexpected. Like, who would expect Gucci and Balenciaga to literally? Correct. Yeah, that was insane. Correct. I love his campaigns. What are designers lacking when they attempt to pull from archives if it's just the designer's experience slash life? I think it's to do with like, so as a designer, you have to have a very strong design identity. And when you have that, regardless of what archive you pull, it will inherently look like your work. So let me give you an example. If Rick Owens was creative director for Dior, he could actually make a bar suit that would actually just look like a Rick Owens jacket, but you would still be able to see it's a bar suit, if that makes sense. Okay. So that's where it's kind of, designers can do that. It's kind of what Alessandro Michele did at Gucci. Not, not to say that Gucci have like deep archives, because they don't, but Alessandro Michele would take like the horse bit loafer idea and then make a Prince Town mule. That's kind of like adding your maximalist understanding to things in a, in a very classic lo-fi and then making it this like firm mule. That is a very, that's what makes referencing interesting. But with Maria, her the references just aren't interesting. It's just very on the nose. It's very obvious. There's no design identity. I don't even know what her design identity right now is. <laughs> I mean, like just what you said before, like we know what she's what we're going to get. It's pretty much the same thing. It, mm. you know, it, it is this like clothes that women want to wear? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, like if I was a woman, I would wear her, some of her stuff, but not all. Maybe like five percent, maybe six. Mm. I'll be I'll be nice because it's Tuesday. Maybe eight, but um, for me, for me, what? <laughs> For me, it just like doesn't. I don't know. I, I I find beauty in like more interesting stuff. I'm like, if it's black right. pants and a white top, I get it. I mean, it's nice. I get it. But like, mm. give me something. And that's the thing. It's why I don't even know. Let me see if I can pull up some of the <laughs> comments on my post about the whole like Alessandro Michele at Valentina. Because oh, yeah. the thing about it is I thought people would be excited because a lot of fashion, I almost feel like fashion is it's not becoming stagnant because I'm going to do a Q&A video soon. And so many of the questions were along the lines of um, 
do you think fashion is dead now or do you think fashion is dying? Which obviously isn't the case. The, the major brands might be doing things that aren't interesting, but there are so many emerging designers doing right. really cool stuff. We just went to the LVMH semi-finalist showroom and we saw loads of interesting collections. Yeah. So the emerging designers are doing amazing stuff. It's just the big brands in because they're chasing 20 billion euros in revenue and 30 billion euros in revenue. They have to distill everything and cut corners and they've almost sucked all the, you know, art and craft and dreaming of these brands. They've just sucked them away. And so if you're looking for interesting fashion, I just don't think that's where you should be looking in the first place. So yeah. when someone like Alessandro Michele comes that actually does interesting things, I thought people would be like, oh, okay, this is someone who is not just going to give us quiet luxury and Boring look like policy. every other brand. Exactly. No, I, I, I pulled up my um, article and people are like, they're scared that Valentino is going to become a circus like Gucci. A circus? Well, I think that they mean it from like a maximalism. Um, Leo, don't get triggered. Um, <laughs> from a maximalism point of view. But does maximalism automatically mean circus, though? Well, to be honest, I well, I understand where they're coming from, especially because I um, Ale no, no, there is maximalism, and then there is Alessandro's maximalism, and I love <laughs> honestly. But like, for example, like dragon heads, you know, like little dragon, for example, you know, yeah, and uh, you know, it it, it 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 sometimes it he did push it further, which made me fall in love with him. But I think that like maximalism has to be for a lot of people kind of like toned down maximalism mm. do you get what i mean mm. that's interesting though because i think it's kind of funny to almost like i understand what you're saying but it's kind of funny to say that you have to tone down maximalism because even the word maximalism it's like yeah it's supposed to be over the top right yeah like that's what it's supposed to be inherently <laughs> um True. That's interesting. Here yeah, says there is good maximalism, Galliano, and ugly maximalism, Michele. <laughs> Leo is just yeah, Leo guy. <laughs> Leo is like I love Leo. Leo, Leo is like a lot of people I know in fashion who like certain designers and then don't like certain designers, and that's just yeah. that it just is what it is. Leo doesn't like Daniel Roseberry, Harris Reed. Miss Sohi. Um, Alessandro Michele and Miss Sohi, mainly. Leo, do we know who, who else are we? Leo, who else do you not like? <laughs> who else did we miss from Leo, your list? I need to know the list. Give me the list. <laughs> Leo was like, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Leo doesn't like Iris Van Herpen. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. He doesn't like Iris Van Herpen. Is that the whole His reason for not liking Iris, I think, was actually a valid point. I'm not going to lie. It was yeah, very okay. valid. Now I'm curious. Why don't we like... I'm not a huge fan of Iris anymore, to be honest. I mean, so there's many reasons that low-key not to like mm -hmm. Iris. The, one, she's a problematic person. That's aside yeah. the point. Um, <laughs> but in terms of like... So what he was saying is that her work is very gimmicky, which I agreed with because he was coming from the perspective of because I, a lot of what Iris Van Herpen does, which I half agree because I've seen some of her work in the craft and it's actually amazing, but in some things that go big on social media, it is just a dress with connected to an, an electronic panel that flaps up and down. And because it's like this technology thing, everyone's like, oh my God, Iris, which is a gimmick. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> it's a gimmick. And it's not, it's just a gimmick. So when he says that her work is gimmicky, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand where you're coming from. I don't think all of her work is gimmicky, but I think <laughs> what people associate with, when they think of Iris, they think of technology. Yeah. But her her clothing is not that advanced. Le it is just Leo, like. Leo is like, let's see if you're going to like her designs when I take the batteries out. <laughs> <laughs> You see Leo wanting to sabotage her just go backstage and take the batteries out. <laughs> Honestly, I think most of my problems with these designers equals gimmicks and drag costumes. I just can't hack it. It's so Gen Z and it's TikToky <laughs> and doesn't feel intelligent or nuanced, no depth. And which is which is true. I mean, to, that's why I said I understand where Leo is coming from. Even though I don't fully agree with it, once again, it's like 
this dress with flaps going all over the place. Yeah. Um, and all that sort of that's actually a gimmick. That is literally a gimmick. Like yeah, I people think, who I, are expert couturiers will not do stuff like that because it's once again it still has to go back to the craft of clothes. So someone like uh Chris, why why I agree with Leo actually more so than ever is someone like Chris Balenciaga would find a way to make the dress flap without adding right. batteries or all that stuff, which would be more of a of a show of craft and skill, right? As a designer and as I a couturier. Love, I love that we're running with this battery theme. Like she's like, I have a full, <laughs> she's like the sponsor of this show is do it a sell. <laughs> <laughs> um yes. <laughs> <laughs> When you take the batteries out, that killed me. <laughs> Leo, Leo in the backstage be like. <laughs> but no, I, I agree. That's why, even though I don't necessarily agree with all of Leo's takes, I kind of understand <laughs> where he's coming from when he makes those. So it, it makes sense. Yeah. That's no, that, that's from, a, that's from a nowhere. Point. That's definitely a fair point. Honestly, I, I, I agree. Um, but But she does have dresses that I'm like, that I'm a star. like I'm not a huge exactly. fan of Iris anymore. Exactly. But like she, she does have dresses that I'm like, what the hell? That's gorgeous. Honestly. Yeah, I agree. Like I went to the Momu Museum in Antwerp and I saw some of her work in an exhibition and it was actually really yeah. good. Um, so that's why I said I half agree and I half don't because I, I don't know if like she does that deliberately for social media because I know designers are doing that now where they have this like gimmicky thing on the runway that kind of even Daniel Rosebury does it where you have a lion head and that goes on social media and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know if that's what she's doing or if she genuinely feels like she's advancing clothing, which I don't think she is. Um, and if that's what she thinks, then my, my, um, but for the most part, I think a lot of what she does is actually like really good. But yeah, as a person, people are asking for the tea. There is no tea other than, because I don't want to tell people's personal stories, but um, when I was still at CSM, of course, in second year, everyone does their year in industry. So yeah. those are my friends interned at different brands like Balenciaga and Iris and Delara Findacoglu, every brand all over the world. Um, and almost everyone that has worked for Iris doesn't have good things to say. and Alleged, very, alle Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. And there are very specific stories that a lot of my friends that have worked for her have told me, um, which make me believe that she's yeah. just not a great person. If you want to know the tea, ask interns what they're saying. That's the same, yeah. but that's the same thing with <laughs> Delara. Same thing. Yeah, same thing with Delara as well, just like Leo brought up Delara. Yeah. 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 Allegedly... What, allegedly, someone that uh, had an internship with Delara, Delara threw something at this intern who happened to also be my friend, allegedly. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, what did Dami say? A gimmick connotes to the design sentiment being something people do to look flashy an appeal to an audience. I agree with that in to some extent. I think so, kind of, Dami, the argument you're making is that it's about the intention, right? Um, is what I'm getting from what you said, which I think sometimes people can actually intend something to be deep, but maybe they lack the skill to actually make it deep. So then it still comes off as being a gimmick, even though that wasn't their intention. Like, if you take a five-year-old and you give them all the deal resources and you give them, like, oh, make it deep, it's still going to be a gimmick because they're five. So, like, it's just... <laughs> sometimes it's not just about the intention, it's also about the execution. Yeah, we we love that allegedly world be, word because... Um... <laughs> so the personal count is... that No, ju just in case... Just in case, you have to say allegedly, just in case. Just in case, if anybody wants to throw something at I, uh... <laughs> Imagine, I, I just, the next time I'm at Paris Fashion Week, someone just throws something at my A head. staple at you and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> A six-inch heel. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so long as it doesn't hit my eye. I'll do that. <laughs> Uh, 
But yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I mean, also something about Alessandro Michela at uh, Valentino is it's kind of like homecoming, isn't it? Because Alessandro is from Rome, right? Yeah, um, I know he lives in Rome. I think that like he is originally from Rome. Yeah, see. so it's kind of like because I know he spent most a lot of time in Rome as well, and he loves being in Rome. So it's it's good for him to be back in Rome because Gucci is wow, based. He's twenty one. Where is Gucci based? Is it based in Florence? No, Gucci is based in Milan, I think, right? Is it based in Milan or Florence? I I, I've, I always get confused between Alessandro it might be Florence or Rome. Milan. Alessandro is from Rome. He but to be fair, Florence is an amazing place to be. Not so much Milan, but Florence is, yeah, that's a great place to be, to be honest. Okay, so he started in uh, Fendi in 1997. Mm. Wait, I can't believe Alessandro's 51. Oh, he's my 51, God. dude. Like, he seems so much younger. He looks amazing for a 51-year-old. Well, uh, he's Jeez. got a lot of, like, you barely see his features. I mean, like, there's a lot of hair. Oh, well, because of the hair. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you know, yeah. all the wrinkles are covered by a bit. <laughs> Is it strategy? strategy <laughs> Tom Ford got him in Gucci yeah okay so Leo is saying that Gucci is based in Florence okay okay yeah that's why is I it thought. really oh yeah you're right. I'm looking forward to seeing where Michaela good. goes with this give it several seasons and we'll judge if he's a one trick pony or not Okay, hmm. so to that point, um, question. Uh, how do you feel about, because I'm changing my opinion on one thing. You know that I'm very big on like not commenting on a debut collection, that I'm yep. more like, give me two or three seasons that I can comment. Yeah, I heard a very interesting point that um, that says that the most important collection, which is kind of true, is the debut collection. And yep. that you should comment on the debut collection because this is the first connection between the designer and the house. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I agree and disagree only because you have to think of the context of debut collections in the time of, you know, designers that we praise, let's say Galliano, like McQueen at Givenchy, like all these times, Galliano at Dior, blah, blah, blah. We need to also remember that there's less at stake financially for those designers. Yeah. So they could do way more creative things and take a lot more risk where I think now almost every debut collection we see is just way too safe. And I think the reason why it's way too safe is because there's so much at stake financially. At the time when, you know, McQueen was at Givenchy, it wasn't even a, like a billion dollar brand or like yeah. a... So that's the thing. But now, because they're playing with billions, that there's too much to lose. So they won't let you do all that sort of stuff. So I think that's yeah. also something to add. And that's actually a big reason why I think giving them more time is the right thing to do. Um, but I also, I see, I see that point where you're coming from in terms of it's still mm -hmm. part of the story they're building um, at the brand that they're designing at. So it does matter. <laughs> The DOA, Sean McGurr doesn't need two or three seasons, it's DOA. I can't. <laughs> and I guess in a way, you're kind of right, because we've seen so many designers only last for like, geez, I mean, Ludovic. we start? Ludovic at Andrew Lemista, um, Ruigi at favorite. Bali. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just like, every, there's, there was like a time when it was just like one or two seasons gone, one or two seasons gone. Yeah. Like, even the designers at um, Chusadi, although theirs was different. Theirs was the GmbH Chusadi, guys? Yeah, yeah, the GmbH guys. Because Chusadi, I think, was going through, like, financial issues or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's the thing. So it's like, if, actually, maybe you're right, because, once again, me saying there's so much at stake, there's actually so much at stake that if you don't perform in a very short span of time, they get rid of you and look for someone else. Correct. Correct. 
I think you should comment on debut collections while remembering you should almost always give another chance. True. Yeah, Leo is not... I don't think Sean deserves a second chance. It's just so incompatible. He does not belong there. Wow. I wonder how... Just speculation. I wonder how Sean is taking to the criticism because as much as like, okay, I wasn't a fan of the collection. Yeah. Mental health, we always need to go back because in fashion, we don't like to talk about mental health. And right. like, I always mention the Kingdom of Dreams documentary series. Watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, where you see like Mark Jacobs go to rehab and like, unfortunately, McQueen took his life and like Galliano had issues and also had to like, get himself fixed and stuff. And so I wonder how he's feeling because obviously he's been a designer behind the scenes all this time. This is probably the first time he's ever been under this sort of scrutiny. So I wonder how he is uh, handling that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope that I, I spoke about it on my on my Instagram because I felt like I felt like an asshole because everybody, no one liked the collection. Mm. It really does. Um, someone said, I'm happy Sean McGurr doesn't have public social media. I'm sure that he has like a, a Finsta account, 100%. Yeah. All of them do. Trust me. Yeah. If Rick has a fin Finsta account, Sean does also. Um, so I, I think that I felt sorry for him. But look, this is his vision of McQueen. I hope that Second Collection is better. If it's not, I mean, like, look, we're going to talk about it one way or another. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, we're going to say that it's bad. I understand. Like, I, I feel sorry for him because like, it really wasn't well connected. But that's the that's the the problem for, like, designing for such a beloved brand. Yeah. You know, like, all of us, like, hold McQueen for on, like, such a different level. I, I know I do because, like, that's the reason why I started the fashion. But, um. I personally just, think he's the greatest designer of all time. Obviously, you can't objectively say that because it's subjective. But for me, if someone asked me who's the greatest designer of all time, I'll say Alexander McQueen to be fair. Same here. Same here. So, like for us, like we we keep it on a we we hold him on like a different pedestal, uh, on you know. But I think that it's going to be fine. Maybe he just needs more time. But yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I I just hope he's he's dealing with it okay because I think Same. I always have to think of these things in context. Like for us, we put ourselves out there on social media, and we're so used to getting hate at this point that it's just like yeah, whatever. Cool. But but when because once again, this is probably the first time he's been under this sort of scrutiny. I don't know what effect that could have on someone. Because if I think of like my YouTube channel, for example. It was growing slowly. So the hate started coming slowly too. So by the time my channel got bigger and there was more hate, I got used to it by reading Correct. the few hate comments. Correct. So I kind of grew with it. But with him, he's gone to a huge house and all of it has just all come at once. But I think that like the people that he's surrounded with are being more like, oh, that was a great collection. You know, just because like we see it doesn't mean that he sees it also. Mm. You know, just because we talk about it doesn't mean that he he sees that stuff like that. So I understand that I'm more like I hope that he has like a good mental health because if he does not show something that is better next time, you know, people love to hate. True. People love to hate. True. But and I yeah, mean, people people in fashion are like. They're harsh, but to the point of... Because if I critique a collection, I would say why I don't like it, why... And I'm talking about the clothes. But the personal attacks... Oh, the, that's... I don't agree with the personal no. attacks at all. The, I don't the, agree with the that. The personal attacks are, like, on a completely different level. Like, you don't know the man. Like, the man presented what he thinks is right. Like, judge yeah. the clothes. Don't, try, don't judge other stuff. Yeah. I do think that that collection could have been saved with a better concept of the show. If he involves more theatrics as McQueen did, some of those pieces would not fail so miserably. Mm. I think. If you put I just think 
It, it, I mean, it, I've it, talked about I've I've talked about the collection so much, but it's like the the theme of the collection was supposed to be this sort of like fun kids in London, animalic sort of thing, and then the set is an abandoned train station, and yeah. we're sitting on sponge things <laughs> that are supposed to represent hay. The whole thing there is doesn't one, make any sense. There is one comment that it, I'm not going to read it out loud, but that is th the most ridiculous thing that I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true that I just think the whole, even if I just think if he, what the idea that he had, if he executed that, it would have been really good. But I just think even that, it just, yeah. I'm, de I'm definitely not going to laugh at that comment. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. If you laugh, I'm, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Oh my god, <laughs> that was deep. That was felt <laughs> person. Um, no, I was the uh, so listen. The design vocabulary is just not McQueen. The lines speak for themselves. Those silhouettes are not McQueen. If you get it, you get it, and if you yeah. can't, you don't. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. The girls will get it, get it, and the girls yeah. don't, don't. We hopefully, we hope that he's going to be one of the girls that get it. But that concept should have been a lot better. I think it would save so many more. And this is what I don't understand. What the what the hell is with, with designers that don't know how to pick a good finale look, like the last look. The only look, in my opinion, that is worth mentioning is that broken glass look. But even that look. What so what killed that look for me and shout out to Son of a Gun because we were looking at it on the live stream is it's a really good idea. Like the reference is really cool, but then you look at the back of the dress and it looks terrible. So it's well, only it, the front that looks nice. Yeah, it was not the yeah. Correct. Which correct. is not McQueen yeah. once again because Alexander correct. McQueen is all about craft. Correct. So that's what I mean. Like it's so even just the design language, not understanding what McQueen stands for, having this really amazing glass dress, and then the back is some horrible lining. It's very that is McQueen would never do that. Yeah, ever. It's very he would not do that. Do we McQueen know is the person that was <laughs> McQueen is the person that was making wooden prosthetic legs from Correct. scratch. Correct. You so can't that... design for McQueen and have terrible lining exactly. as the back of a dress. It's just not good enough. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, the buyers did not, the, the that collection did not hit the stores yet. From what I know, at least. Oh, the McQueen, yeah, it hasn't hit the stores yet. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. But it looks like a, it looks like a Sheen version of Loewe. What are you talking about? The leather pieces? Uh, I like the leather pieces with little straps at home. No, the, the, I'll show you the piece that, that like killed me. Wait. Um, I was a Laurie McQueen client when Sarah was there for like five years. Not anymore, though. I <laughs> just copped my last jacket from Sarah. Damn. What brand are you hopping to now, Leo? What's your brand of choice now that Sarah is no longer there? The dress that felt like the dress that felt like a personal attack, hands down. <laughs> a personal hands attack. Down. It was a personal attack. It called me all the slurs, including. The oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, that was that curtain look. Yeah, that was terrible. That this was, was that was just. This was really there's nothing to say, because even I'm someone who's like, oh, what's the reference? What's the this? What? But even with all of that, it's still not great. Yeah, um, you know, the reference was JW. Yeah, categorically just bad. Um, yeah. Agreed. I did love the footwear though. I, I always go back to the footwear. Those like Correct. horse Correct. Little things. Those were amazing. The the whole the horse thing is the only thing that kind of like I was like super impressed with. But and it works in the theme because it's supposed to be this like animal sort of like rebellious theme. Um, because I think in the show notes, and I think someone alluded to that in the comments too, is the show notes he was talking about the world being soft which I don't agree with. Well, literally, there's war everywhere. Uh, I don't know what world he's living in. Um, <laughs> but but 
I get it. So you want to have a world that you want to create a McQueen world that's like rough on the edges, but there was nothing rough on the edges about that show. Yeah. McQueen, no. McQueen, if if you want to do rough around the edges at McQueen, we have to be shocked when we see the collection. Because when McQueen did shows himself, we yeah. were genuinely like off of our seat. Show. Well, not we, because I wasn't there, unfortunately, <laughs> but um when I was living vicariously through the people that were there, when I watched the runway shows, people are literally on the edge of their seat in horror shock when McQueen does shock yeah. or does, you know, that sort of stuff. So I just think there's just a lack of understanding of what McQueen stands for, what the house stands for, what are the house codes, just complete lack of understanding of sure. any of it. And that goes back to like the referencing once again, because he referenced so many past McQueen collections, but the reason why they fell flat is the way he referenced them. He it's referenced exactly. them without an understanding of the essence of what the brand represents. Correct. You can reference it all you want, but you have to be smart about referencing. Like we are not in your brain and we have to see if you want the reference to land, we have, it has to be like easily detectable. It doesn't have to be the most obvious but it should be e easily detectable. A lot of those pieces were just like a miss, especially the, um, I, sh I showed it, the, these last three pieces were just, I have oh, no the, idea. The car, the car one. I, that was because I think he said his dad is a mechanic. So it's like a reference to, that's why they use like car paint and like the chassis steel that you would use for a car. Um, and that was a reference to you know Sarah Burton did that collection that had the with the floral prints. I can't remember what season it was, but it was kind of like similar, kind of like that molded design. And McQueen has done it himself. No, I know. I have to. I have to bring them up. The McQueen one. McQueen actually did it twice. Um, I know. He let me did see like if I can. Let me. Yeah, let me I see if I can bring them like up the, on the screen. I know he did like the torso with the face. Um, yeah. Attached to it, we were in McDonald's when we were looking for that. What's that? We were in McDonald's when we were so basically after the show, after we saw the show, me and Ayo get together and we're talking how bad the show is, and then we end up in McDonald's. Like, <laughs> yeah, true. true fashion people, <laughs> <laughs> like true fashion people, we go to McDonald's. So gla so glamorous. How glamorous of us. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh my god, you guys are like living fashion, and I'm like, girl, it is. Uh, a a chicken burger. You know, at, we were exhausted at, at the end of the day because that day was like, remember, we both were like running late because the trains were really weird and like yeah. getting delayed and stuff. And then it was raining <laughs> really heavily. Like it was just a terrible day. Oh <laughs> it God, just yeah, wasn't that's crazy. Cool, <laughs> I and, then like, got to, I, and then we saw that collection after all of that. Oh my God. Like, um, no, I, I remember we were uh, we were in a train and I'm sending you a message. I'm like, hey, where are you? You're like, I'm running. And I'm like, well, I'm in the train. And then my train out of nowhere stops. And then Paris, like, it stops in the middle of nowhere. It's like, everybody has to go out. And I don't speak French. And I'm like, not cute at all. Because my train just, it just stopped for like 10 minutes. And I was like, I am late for the McQueen show. <laughs> it's I like was of all to... times to stop. It's exactly, now. <laughs> exactly. No, it doesn't matter. You woman, you. The car dresses are representative of animals being hit by cars and how the human world encroaches on the animal world, representing how we deny our animal nature. Let me write the show notes. <laughs> you you should have you should have written <laughs> <laughs> You would have been amazing writing the show notes. <laughs> 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 the proof that anything can be PR'd into credibility. I hope they give you the job. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that was, yeah. I think also the thing about the McQueen show that was a bit insane was because we were so, everyone was looking forward to it so much. I think maybe my expectations were maybe too high. Same. Because like... 
I was expecting, I was like, yeah, this is a McQueen debut. He's going to do something where, like, the ceiling is literally going to come down as the finale or something. Yeah. Like, I remember filming it because I was, I was like there at the show and then the finale look came out and I was like, okay, oof, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> and then, like, nothing happened. <laughs> no, I remember, like, turning to Luke and I'm turning, like, Luke was sitting next to me, so I just turned to Luke and I'm like, this is not <laughs> literally with my phone just being like this is the most shocking thing about all of it was show studio even were very critical yeah. about the collection which I did not expect because they have an amazing relationship with the brand I mean yeah, Alexander that's... McQueen has so many videos of him like creating stuff on show studio and they've always been close to the brand and they've always gone to the shows they've always had someone that goes to the show so but the time show studio is saying, yeah, that was that didn't represent McQueen well. That's like, yeah. Yeah, true. That's very true. Even because show studio, they love McQueen. I think we all do. It's just that, like, you know, that's the reason why we're so passionate about it. Like, we don't, you know, trust me, if that was like Ludovic the sounds around, like we would be like, okay, cool. <laughs> love that for you. Could you imagine if Ludovic did a debut for McQueen? Everyone would just be in like mini skirts and jock straps. I swear to God, it would not be, I would not be there. They'll be like, do you want to come to the show? I'll be like, I'm fine. And like towels and stuff. Exactly. No. And then the best part is that he would be there for that season. <laughs> oh my God. Still the best story ever. Still the best story ever. Nothing is to be fair. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen in fashion. Nothing One is season. That story. I don't even think he was there for six months. He it was, was there bad. for. I have it written down. Wait. Oh, why well, he has it written down? <laughs> Wait. I'll tell you exactly, doll. Oh my. He was in there in a to for a total of one hundred and seventy days. 170 days. Wow. Right. Yeah. Oh, half the year. Yeah. So like I said, not not the complete six months. Yeah. Which is almost, crazy. but not quite. Don't ask why I have that written down. <laughs> Soaring Spears and they'll stop the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I love fashion though. Yeah, me too. It's like it's so messy and fun at the same time, but it's so beautiful <laughs> and ugly. And I'm like, I love this industry. <laughs> it's all these things all at once. <laughs> Somebody says school butt plugs. <laughs> I swear to God, that would be like the most ludicrous thing. McQueen ever. pasties and a belt as a skirt. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that yeah, exactly what you would do. Exactly, I swear. What's the one? No. You're about to ask something really flagrant. I can just tell. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you had to backtrack. I'm trying to think, like, what's the worst combination you could ever think of? Like, this designer that, like, you would rather, like, kill right. and see that this designer in a specific house. Right. And I'm like, right. What, I'm like, what is, like... The nightmare mm. combination. Wow, I'd have to really think about that. The worst could. Wow. Leo, Leo's going to be like uh, Daniel L or Misohi. Anyway. This is going to be like Harris Reed and any brand. <laughs> That's what Leo is going to say. Harris Reed, um, Reed would kill me 100% true. <laughs> Harris Reed at McQueen. Oh my gosh. That would be a disaster. Uh, wow, someone said Christian Siriano anywhere. Damn. MGC at McQueen. Christian Siriano at Chanel. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Read the comments. Someone said Christian Siriano anywhere. <laughs> this is my type of a person. Jeremy Scott and McQueen. Now people are just saying this person at McQueen, that person at McQueen. Justice for Lindsay Lohan at Ungaro. Cho. <laughs> I think Christian Siriano at Dior, I would, I would, I would, I would quit fashion. <laughs> I would quit fashion now. 
<laughs> it's so bad that I just associate Chris and Tirana's work now with like H&M and stuff. It's really bad that I do that mentally. Um, Philip Klein at Fendi. <laughs> Philip Line at Fendi would be like a, I don't know, it would be kind of interesting. It would be like all the football players wearing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and they'll make it popular. Cursed collections. <laughs> Cursed collections. I need to think of one from... that would be really bad. D I need to think of one that, like... are ruthless. Where do you come up with this? <laughs> uh, the audience is creative. I swear. <laughs> Very creative. <laughs> Ziggy is just like, yeah, I don't know any of these. They designers. said they said get a golden doodle. Like this when I tell you that he has like attachment issues. This is it. <laughs> That's why I was like, when you came back home yesterday, did he tackle you? Oh yeah. Because the last like, time you, you came home, he was so excited. It was so oh, cute. Yeah. He this is like him. He's gonna fall asleep like this. I'm dead serious. <laughs> He's gonna fall asleep. And every time that I'm anywhere, he just like wants to lay on your leg. He wants to have some kind of a touch so he doesn't feel alone. Oh. Uh, yeah. Which okay. Matty Bovin anywhere. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Matty. No, I like Matty though. Matty um, is very Matty is very London. Not not because Matty isn't from London, but Matty's aesthetic is very much like London club kids. It's like Charles Jeffrey Loverboy. It comes from that same like school of thought. Like it's like ball. very <laughs> all over the place. It's like it's like art project. Whereas I think even though um what's his face? Um Charles Jeffrey Loverboy, he comes from that same school of thought of London Club Kids, but the difference is I think Charles Jeffrey has found a way to streamline those ideas into things that are actually really, really interesting. I think Matty Bovan is still in the art kid phase of just like Wait, what, do what whatever. Question? What happened with that art school? Do you remember that brand art school? Uh oh. What? Do you want to get into that? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I mean, I know what happened to them, but like, are they designing still? I don't. I don't know what they're doing. To be fair. Huh. The whole thing fell down because obviously yeah. they were hit with a lot of accusations of doing a lot of crazy things. And going back to the whole CSM thing, I like I know someone who worked at um, art school and had to leave because of how bad it was. Um, so yeah, that kind of ended in flames. I look like I'm wearing a fur stole. <laughs> oh yeah, allegedly. Thank you very much. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> uh, I have to do a review of that Dior show. Have fun. <laughs> Are you coming to New York for the Met? Yeah, I am. I am. Okay. Are you going to head on so, the whole time? I'll see or not? you in. Three weeks? Uh, you have to answer my about, question. About three weeks. Uh, am gonna... I going to hit on you? Of course, I always hit on you. Okay, good, good, good. Just want to make sure. So I know if I'm not to get too attached to me, though, because I know it's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, <laughs> Word of the stream, I mean, allegedly. After, That's funny. Okay, after, after this uh, stream, give me a call because um, I want to talk about something. Oh, yeah, definitely. I want to talk about something about, like, the Met. Um... Oh, okay. Yeah. Tea. What? Hot what? tea. What do you want? Um, but yeah. <laughs> NYC moment, get the girls together. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. We should, honestly. Of course. We should, we should do something. What, like a meetup in New York? Yeah. That would actually be interesting, to be honest. Maybe the night before, because it's Sunday. When do you arrive? I think the 4th. But I should be coming in early, though. Maybe we should do that. Hmm. Do you want to come with this? Do you want to come with this to a meetup? Wait, Nancy Dojaka was considered for Givenchy. Really? I've not heard that. Yeah. Yeah, she was. She was. 
Really? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear about that. But to be honest, I have no idea what they're doing at Givenchy anymore. I'm like, girl, give us somebody. Like, we're forgetting that you exist. <laughs> I swear. I'm a bit biased because I actually did like the last collection. I really enjoyed it, especially because I got to see the Reese. I thought it was actually really good. Oh, no, wait, it was just designed. Or, yeah, it was designed by the team. The house. It was, it was just designed by the team. But I, I thought it was really good. But they, if they want to actually make money, they need a, a creative director. They need someone that can, you know, fit Correct. the headlines. Correct. <laughs> My love. No, but like... Uh... <laughs> Straight guys. In fact, what's wrong with us? We're amazing. What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, to be honest, there's not a lot of straight guys in fashion, but the ones that there I aren't, know are to be fair, are actually, ones that I know are actually very nice. We're amazing. Thank you very much. Honestly, no, we're great. Um, uh, and also, the my uh, suggestion for uh, the nightmare um, combo would be Garam at Chanel. Oh wow! No, no. All the Chanel, it's just going to have slogans of like, uh, no. I hate Demna and like <laughs> in tweed. <laughs> Balenciaga is trash in tweed. <laughs> Anand is so straight vibes. I know. I know. Hanan is okay. so straight. I Leo. talk about like basketball and he's like, what's that? <laughs> Like, like, what are you guys someone, talking about? I'm literally like, so why are they all running? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, Leo said my dream casting, which I've always been saying, and that is Hyder should go to Givenchy. 100%. The only problem I'm, with Hyder is, for some reason, he doesn't seem to last long at places. Like, even Baluti, it didn't really last too long. Yeah, true. That's true, though. So, it's, and I don't I don't actually know what the story is behind no. the whole Baluti thing. I know there is some sort of story, but I don't know what it is. Um, so, yeah. Okay, it's what Leo is saying. Hyder doesn't care. Maybe that's what it is. What's the MLB, quick? You mean you mean NBA? I know. What no, NBA no, is. no, MLB. MLB. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, this is how straight Hanan is. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it, give me a like, hint. What's what's the MLB? And he was like the NBA. <laughs> wait, that's it. Marshall Walker from Balenciaga. Wait, is that Le is that it's a player, right? MLB. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a league. Guess it's guess league. what sport? Try to get guess what sport? MLB. It's an American sport. I'll give you that's Rugby. the hint. I'll give you. Rugby's not an American sport. <laughs> first thing that's the first thing that came to me. Base baseball. That's English. Yes, baseball. After baseball. I think someone commented it though. You cheated. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they did. They did. They did. <laughs> Stop. I love that. Hanan said, American sport, rugby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I actually know a lot of players because of Patrick. Patrick watches. So he's really? always like, oh, wow. No, Patrick, basketball? Patrick knows the statistics like crazy. So whenever like he, he's impressed with something, he goes like, did you see the shot that LeBron did? And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. <laughs> STA uh, Leah's asking me, have I heard the rumors about Adi leaving Celine? Really? I did. I, I did. thought Celine was like his child at this point. He's doing everything. He's doing the photography for campaigns. He's making his own fragrance line. I thought he was like really long term committed to the brand. And he's doing all of that. And the only person that matters is Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, though. I swear. Soccer, the gay sport. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I love how, like, in America, 
football is seen like soccer is seen as like a a gay sport or like only for women and then in, you go to england and like the fans are the worst people on earth <laughs> that's like, like yeah that's the same thing as crazy it, in in europe they're the they're the worst they people care. on earth that's so bad <laughs> <laughs> Say soccer with an American at soccer. 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 Something. I love Something. Americans. Every time I every time I say pizza dough, people always think I'm saying pizza. And I'm like, no, you just don't know what an English accent is. Pizza <laughs> is very different to pizza. Does anybody know about uh, did you notice your turned off their comments for live stream? I think they usually do that because you cannot watch that live stream. Because of the comments, like when they, if you're talking about Instagram, at least the comments are, um, there's so many of them that they cover the screen a lot of the time. So you cannot like properly see the clothes, to be honest. That's a good point, to be honest. Yeah. It's distracting. But yeah, it's like, oh my God, did he say pizza? <laughs> I need to say, I need to say Peter now, Peter now, Peter now, Peter now, like an American, Peter. Peter. Anyway. Remind me, was Crick Owens the crazy, yeah, Crick Owens was the crazy email guy. That was Crick Owens. Crick Owens. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna dip because I'm hungry, um, and I'm gonna go. I have to make. I have to make a shit ton of content. Enjoy honestly. your food. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Uh, call me when you're <laughs> done with this because uh, we have to play New York. I shall. I shall. Okay. I shall. Perfect. How long are you gonna do this? It's been two hours. Uh, not for much longer. Once it hits two hours, I'm out. So we've got 14 minutes left. Look at you. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy your day. Bye. Follow me on YouTube because I'm. I yeah, to subscribe to Hanan on YouTube. I deserve couture at yeah. I deserve couture. Yeah, I'm just like going from live stream to live stream, just begging people to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's Bye. not the case. Everyone wants to subscribe. It's, That's not it's true. It's called a strategy. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, Ziggy, let's eat. Let's eat. Bye, everybody. I'll talk to you later, brother. Bye. We've literally got our own terminology in these live streams. <laughs> Bye, Hanan. Stay urban. <laughs> Stay urban. <laughs> oh, my word. Anyway, we're going to do... Because it's 30 minutes till it hits the two-hour mark. So we can do a quick Q&A. And then I need to go to the gym. Um, and I need to watch football, actually. Barcelona's playing in the Champions League. I think they it's already started, actually. So, yeah. Oh, my God. He's finally gone. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Why be a suburban when you can just be urban? Wait, Barcelona have scored already. Oh, my gosh. Let me Google it. Let me see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Rafinha scored. Crazy. Isn't it too late for the gym? Is it ever too late for the gym? My gym is 24 hours, so sometimes I go... I literally sometimes I even go at midnight if I have work to do in the day. Um, because, unfortunately, being a freelancer means I'm <laughs> I'm beholden to my employers. So I just have to do things in the deadline, and then once I'm done, it's off to the gym. So today I'm probably going to go to the gym at 10 p.m. and come back home at 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. ish. So yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late. Who do you think will actually end up going to Givenchy? Do you think they're waiting for Sarah? Actually, Sarah would be an amazing fit at Givenchy, just to say that. Um, who would actually go there? You need a designer that can design classical tailoring, but do it in an interesting way which Sarah Burton is perfect for. Um, I'm trying to think of someone else who could be perfect for that. Hmm. 
Really good at tailoring, but also really interesting clothing. And also not too maximalist or too colorful because Givenchy is not super colorful. Um, because even Pio Paolo can do tailoring really well, but Pio Paolo is more of like a dressmaker than he is tailoring. Um, so I don't think he would be a good fit at Givenchy at all. Um, all the designers I'm thinking of, I don't know. Like Arturo, I don't know. That's more of like an Andy type designer. Um, Olivia Tyskens is more of an Andy type designer or like a Dior. Olivier could do Dior. I don't know if I see Olivier Givenchy, to be honest. Um, I have to think about that one. I have to think about that one. Oh, I like a rock star yet classic vibe for Givenchy. Gillian McDonald was there, was good there, sorry, in my opinion. Interesting. Yeah, kind of like the rock star. But that's what I'm saying. I think Givenchy is very classic with an edge. So you can't go too far off that edge, though. But it still has to be, there has to be an edge to your tailoring. Or if you're making classic clothing, it, there has to be a sort of edge. And I think a lot of designers that I like, they might take that edge a bit too far. And if they don't, they would almost stifle the reason why I like their work in the first place. So... Phoebe Philo. Yeah, so funny enough, Phoebe Philo is actually probably the perfect designer for Givenchy. Although the issue with Phoebe Philo, going back to Givenchy, is Phoebe Philo doesn't really have the twist. Phoebe Philo is the classic, really good tailoring without the twist. So I don't even know. That's what I mean. Like that it's a very specific designer that would work at Givenchy. It's a very, very specific designer. Arisa goes to Dior. Dior in the sense of like take over the whole thing, like Kim Jones and Maria Gartiaturi, or just for women's wear? What would be your choice? Yes, everyone has been saying that he might be going to Chanel. I've heard that too. But I don't want to jump the gun because the rumors were that Alessandro Michele was going to go to Chanel when he left Gucci. So I think Chanel just seems to be a scapegoat. Anytime a big designer leaves their role, it's like, oh, they might go to Chanel. <laughs> um, okay, so Adi Simon for men's wet Dior. Funny enough, I think that Kim Jones does really good men's wear at Dior. Did I like his clothes at Dior when he was just collaborating every season and it felt like he wasn't designing himself? No. But I think as time has progressed, I think I've seen more of his ideas and his design language and I actually quite like it. But I think when he started, my biggest critique of Kim Jones's work was you're not really designing because the first collection, I think he collaborated with Daniel Arsham. And most of the pieces that everyone was talking about were the pieces like the decayed pieces, the pieces that were, that was when um, Matthew Williams from Elix was designing the hardware. And then you had Stephen Jones doing the headwear. And then you had Yoon Ahn doing the accessories. So it almost seemed like Kim Jones wasn't really doing anything. It wasn't, yeah, it didn't, it just felt like, where's your, where are your ideas? And so even he had that collaboration with Travis Scott, he had that collaboration with Stussy, so it just seemed very too much collaboration and not enough of Kim Jones. Um, but now I'm a, I I do enjoy what he does at Dior. So I think now more than ever, I probably wouldn't want to see him get replaced at Dior. I think where Kim Jones should be replaced is Fendi. The women's wear at Fendi, I I don't know what to say. Uh, the pendulum will swing in the other direction. And at some point, these giant houses will need to hire unknown talent again. I guess they're kind of doing that in terms of um, 
you know, like Sabato at Gucci and that's those sort of hires. I think that's slowly happening because for the most part, there was a time when all the designers were just doing musical chairs. And at least now we're seeing like a Sean McGear that no one has heard of going to McQueen or a Sabato DeSano, who also no one had heard of going to Gucci. So I think in a way we are getting this sense of, you know, young talent being allowed to be at these houses or even someone like a, a Maximilian, even though, okay, Maximilian was actually quite a well-known designer when he went to Ferragamo, a lot more well-known than like Sabato or Sean McGear. Um, but he is still like sort of emerging talent being given a chance at a big house. So I guess we're kind of seeing that in a way. I think the pendulum is starting to swing. I'm the BBC of fashion, Billionaire's Boys Club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're on the same wavelength. BBC does mean Billionaire's Boys Club. I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, any last questions before I take my leave and run to the gym and also call Hanan because he has some tea for me? <laughs> British broadcasting cock. <laughs> you guys are terrible. You guys are actually terrible. <laughs> BBC of fashion, red card. <laughs> You guys are insane. <laughs> I do like these streams, though, because I think that my audience has my sense of humor, which is great, because I think some people take fashion way too seriously. And it's it's at the end of the day, it's like, yes, this is my full time career, but they are just clothes. Um, sometimes people act like with fashion, we're saving the world and we're curing cancer. Um, and sometimes, yeah, people just need to lighten up, loosen up. <laughs> it's not very urban of us. Not very urban indeed. Let me see if I missed any comments, because I actually didn't miss a lot of comments. Because I was too busy discussing different fashion things. <laughs> For I feel the same way. I feel like I joke too much in here, but I love when it's fun. Yeah, it's all about it's all about keeping the streams fun. It can't be too serious. Imagine if I didn't joke around. It would almost be like a lecture, and it would be boring. Be like, yeah, so Alessandro Michele was appointed at Gucci in 2015, and he only had a very short span of time to design a collection because the collection was that Frida Giannini was supposed to design was supposed to be the was supposed to go out in February. So he only had a month to try and conjure up a new idea. It's boring. That's boring. <laughs> That's very boring. <laughs> I hope Crick Owens makes a return. <laughs> Said I'd fall asleep so quick. <laughs> That's so boring. Like this is this is a fashion live stream. It's not it's part entertainment, part knowledge. It's not um, a seminar and it's not a lecture. Oh, best young designer I've seen this year. Wow. Uh, I've seen a lot of good young designers this year, not going to lie. Um, Alexander Bagnall is a really cool designer. Alexander Bagnall is a designer who designs, he's like a sportswear designer with a twist. And it's just really interesting. Like the kind of stuff that Alex makes, I don't really see anyone making. And I don't see a lot of fashion designers delve into the world of sportswear. So that was really interesting. Um, I was recently a judge for um, the ITS Awards um, in Italy and most of the finalists, their work is sensational. 
Um, there was a uh, so many designers. I don't even know how to start. There was this like German designer called Marcel Sommer who had really really good tailoring. Um, there was a designer called Ivan Delog. Delogu, I think, Ivan Delogu, who I think is Italian, who had a really interesting collection. Um, where do I even start? There was a British guy called Richard Farby, who I thought was really interesting. He had this jewelry collection, and it was all inspired by looking at the crafts people that actually make the jewelry. Um, and it was one of the best jewelry collections I've ever seen in my life, literally. I was like, this is so good. And it was just because he's a jewelry designer. It was just jewelry. I've never seen someone do storytelling through jewelry like that ever. It was so good. Um, so I guess those are like standouts to me. I also really like, this is less of like an emerging, like a young, young designer. But I like Hodakova, even though I know a lot of people say that Hodakova is like derivative of Margiela, which once again, kind of valid. A lot of Hodakova's work, not a lot, actually, some of Hodakova's work is very Margiela adjacent, but I also think there's a lot of different stuff in there too that I also like. Um, so I really do like the brand Hodakova. I'm trying to think of uh, any other young designers I've seen recently that I thought were like really there's so many though because i see i see designers collections all the time um knitwear collection of Zhu. oh yeah Zhu bao right Zhu bao was um won an award actually at the its awards Zhu bao's work is really good really really good too Zhu bao was like a standout Zhu bao was definitely a standout Like insane knitwear techniques, like crazy knitwear techniques. Um, Jubao was really good. <laughs> will there be any new blood for Chanel? It seems like there will be because everyone is speculating that Pil Palo is going there. So that's left to be seen, but it probably will happen, to be honest. Oh, this is a deep question. Will fashion take on the political climate with Palestine and Israel war taking place or will Ukraine have a boost of designers coming in? I don't know. I think actually a lot of people in fashion are a bit too scared to touch those kind of issues. Um, and it's also to do with like what side, because with these like political issues, it comes down to who owns the platforms. So say like a Ukraine-Russia war, because there aren't massive Russian companies that own, um, let's say, Vogue or whatever, people are free to say whatever, like say their opinion, right? Um, whereas I think with the Israeli conflict, you can't really touch that. I can, because I'm independent, but most people work within organizations that are kind of owned um, by, you know, companies that would only let you take one stance, which I don't agree with fundamentally because I like freedom of speech. So I like listening to opinions from both sides, regardless of what it is. Um, obviously, I have my own personal opinion on the issue. Um, but yeah, I think that's why a lot of people in fashion are scared to touch that in general. Yeah, kind of what... Exactly. I think they weren't too risky money-wise because it comes down to who owns the platforms and who owns these companies, right? So I just think they wouldn't touch it, personally. Do you know anyone who has done a CSM, MA in culture, criticism and curation program? Does it seem worth it? I know, I think I know a few people that have done that, actually. If you send me um, a DM on Instagram, I can get back to you with that. Yeah, Westwood is also, she was radical. Like, yeah, she would say what she wants to say. And, like, no one could tell, could tell like, her anything, which is good. 
Um, it's good to have freedom of speech. I'm lucky because I have my own platform. Thanks to you lovely people watching. Um, so I can just say what I want and not care. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Um, however, unfortunately, most people that work in fashion are not in that boat. So yeah, when it comes to hiring and stuff like that, they have to be careful with that, with that conflict. It's very, uh, it could mess up a lot of people's money. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Urban's empowering freedom of speech. <laughs> Ayo, is it absolutely essential to do the BA design for an MA in design at CSM? No. So I have friends who have done a BA in fashion design in different schools, and then they did an MA in design at CSM. What I haven't seen, which actually might be the question you're asking actually, is can you do a different BA and then do an MA in fashion design at CSM? I don't think that's possible. Because I think, because there's a guy called Fabio who runs the MA course. And the MA course is so advanced at CSM that there are people that when they apply to study fashion design, fashion design, sorry, at CSM for MA, they don't get on it. And then they're advised to do like this diploma thing because CSM has this like MA diploma and then it's one year. And when you pass that, then you get onto the MA course. So if they think you're not ready, then they put you on that diploma and you have to do an extra year. But even the people on those diploma, a lot of those people have done BAs in fashion design. So I, I don't know how someone could possibly not have a BA in fashion design and get onto the MA at CSM. I don't even think that's possible, to be honest, um, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I guess on that note, I shall now be ending the stream. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, and hopefully we can start streaming again. I've been traveling a lot. Um, luckily, because I was judging the It's Awards and then I came back and then I had to go to Paris um, with Nike. So I've been doing a lot of different things, but I love to stream and make fashion content and talk about fashion history and talk about what's going on in fashion. And, and I've kind of missed it. So thank you very much, guys. And I'll be back very soon, uh, hopefully next week. But yeah. <laughs>